So again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and record now, and uh, we're going to post this recording to YouTube so that you all can look at this over and over. I'm going to do the second half of the ECG portion of the Vital Signs Monitor PM. Again, this week we're just going to focus on the ECG for, uh, portion. I do have a full PM here in front of us. Notice that we've got the SPO2 and NIBP portions, and here are the headers. And those are actually uh, going to cover more tests. Your PM sheet may or may not be an older or newer one. I've just given you a couple of ones that should actually focus on the ECG. If, if you have one that's slightly different, if you have someone that's slightly different, look for this area here. Something that starts with rate calibration, rate alarm, then goes through common mode rejection ratio, uh, the gain, sensitivity, paper speed, and alarm delay. And those are the tests that we're actually going to do in this lab. So I'm going to put this sheet off to the side so that I cover those in that order. And uh, hopefully you all can, uh, can follow along. I've got the monitor tilted here so that I can hopefully show you how to activate the controls as necessary. They're actually uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, everything should work as you're used to. Uh, we've covered the top portion in electrical safety. Uh, notice that the three new tests are on this sheet for lead to ground, lead to lead, lead isolation. Yes, I do expect you to do that in this lab. Sound good? Then in the second portion here, the ECG, let's go through rate calibration. What they're talking about here is I'm going to give it a 60 beat a minute. I don't know if you can see on this tester very well. 60 beat a minute equals 60 beat a minute right up here. So uh, the monitor is definitely calibrated to be accurate within uh, a certain percentage. And I'm just not getting it. There we go. You know, I should almost get it clamped down. People ask me, well, why not zoom in? Well, first off, I've got this large area to cover, and second off, uh, well, it's uh, putting it at a different level, and it's going to be a challenge. Anyway, moving along. Doing the rate calibration, we've got 60 beats a minute right here on my tester. I've got 60 beats a minute right here on my monitor, so that's a good uh, check. What I want to do here is I want to change the 60 beats a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the up and down arrows. By the way, you select different numbers by hitting the circular measurements. And then you go up by hitting the up arrow. That's 120. I'm going to hit enter. Always hit enter after every change. Notice now we're at 120 beats a minute. And it's violated the alarm, which is an interesting one. We'll go back to that alarm. Uh, huh. The alarm limit 130, uh, one, okay, 130 and 40. So <clears throat> we could check those alarms. And those alarms are located right here. So notice here 120 beats per minute, 120 beats per minute, right? Okay, so rate alarm, they've got 40 and 120. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop my ECG down to 100. I'm going to go into my rate alarms. You press ECG. Down the corner here, it'll say alarm limits. And then you have an option here. I'm going to go to my high alarm, and I'm going to lower it to 120 as requested, right? I believe we can trigger it right there. Notice how in the corner here it has adjusted to 120. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to raise my heart rate to 120. After this goes to above 120, we should actually be able to measure uh, or see an alarm. Let's see. Watch it not trigger here. Okay, I'm going to drop my alarm slightly. Drop it to 110. There we go. I dropped it to 110. It took less than 10 seconds for it to respond. 
Uh, you do want to have a slight alarm delay. I'm going to go ahead and raise it so that it's not alarming at us constantly. You do want to have a slight alarm delay and that's actually at the bottom of the uh, check. We'll go ahead and we'll mention more about that. Let's go ahead and check the low alarm. I'm going to highlight my low alarm. I'm going to leave it at 40. I'm going to go here to my tester and I'm going to lower the uh, heart rate 45, 40, let's go to 30. It should uh, start alarming on that. Within 10 seconds of this going down to 30. There we go. So it definitely does alarm appropriately. I'm going to set it back to 60 because we're going to need it at 60 for another test. Okay, so that's how you verify your high and your low alarms. It's pretty much exactly what you were doing with SPO2, right? It's just you've got a tester right here. Uh, the next one, this is going to be really interesting. Uh, it's interesting from a perspective of what it's accomplishing. Common mode rejection ratio, CMRR. The key word I want you to think of is rejection. We're going to reject something. What would you not want displayed on a screen? Can anyone guess? Oh no, there's that. I got, that's a broad question. How about I help you out? How about noise? Would you want to see a bunch of noise on the screen? No. So we've got to get rid of the noise. Where are we getting noise from? Does anyone know? The lights, okay, and the, the, the power coming out of the wall, right? What frequency is that? 60 hertz. Believe it or not, it also has a harmonic at about 100 hertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the 60 hertz and the 100 hertz noise, and we're going to see what happens right here to our ECG. So um, in order to see this, we may have to scooch it a little closer here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to performance. Hmm? There we go. That's better. <clears throat> Lumen computer. Okay, we're going to go to performance. Notice how it says square wave there? That is a check we're going to have to do here in a little bit. Um, triangle wave, sine wave. Notice it says 0.1 hertz. I'll show you what, uh, well actually let's start with 10 hertz. 5 hertz and 10 hertz. Notice how my screen looks right there. That is what a 5 hertz uh, wave looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to suspend alarms since we've gone ahead and we've looked at this. What you do is you uh, tone reset, suspend alarm. There we go. So, uh, the alarm is suspended now. What we're going to do here is we're going to increase the frequency. Notice it's letting 5 hertz through. It's going to let 10 hertz through. You are essentially a 5 to 10 hertz machine. For lack of a better term, that is approximately the standard neuromuscular response of a human being. That's why those people who get those really low car audios at 20 hertz or below tend to have heart attacks is because a interfering wave is actually interfering with the the natural harmonics of their body and it's causing problems it's actually killed people as weird as that sounds never thought of you could kill someone with sound there you go okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna increase the frequency I'm gonna go to 40 Hertz and you're probably going to see a bunch of noise. Now that's what electrical noise normally looks like right there. That's a big fat band. I'm going to go up to 60 hertz. Oh, there's 50. Let's go to 50. Notice I still have a bunch of noise, right? Why? Because we don't use 50 hertz systems. We use 60 hertz systems. Look at that. It went to nothing. The filter works. Let's try the filter. I'm going to go back to 50 because we know we've got something at 50. And then I'm going to dial in 100. 
Notice how 100 went to nothing. So the 100 hertz works. So what would I say about this device? Fantastic for use in the US. I wouldn't use it in Europe or Japan because uh, they use 50 hertz systems. Right? Pretty much uh, restricts this machine to North America. But you get the point, right? I'm going to go back to normal rhythm. That's this button right down here. I don't know if you can see my hand. Go down here in the corner. Northern, normal rhythm. It's going to take me back to my normal uh, uh, sinus rhythm and where I was at is the uh, performance tab before. So let's go back to our normal wave here, right? And notice I got 60 beat per minute and I got one millivolt. What we're going to do now is we're going to do a gain check. What I want to do is I want to change it from one millivolt to half a millivolt. You can, by the way, do this with a uh, one millivolt to two millivolt, what should happen to the approximate size on the screen when I cut the voltage in half? Should drop approximately in half. Let's see if we can catch this on the screen. See that one? Oh, I didn't. Uh, it took a little bit of time. Notice there it's approximately half the uh, size as it was before. Let me do this again. I'm going to set it back to 1. Notice that at 1, it's going to take a certain amount. Now, I've gone ahead and I've actually put a sheet of paper next to them and I've measured them. And then I've actually compared those notches between top of the QRS and the bottom of the QRS to the next one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lower it and I'm going to hit enter. And you'll notice that the waveform is definitely much smaller. And then just compare the notches to that. If necessary, then what you do is you take the sheet of paper and you fold it in half and you see where your notches are based upon that line. Does that make sense? And that will be a good way for you to compare what full-sized and small-sized wave looks for. And that's how you can do a gain check. Okay? Here's how you can do a sensitivity check. That's the next one. Notice it says 0.5 to 0.15 millivolt somewhere in this range my signal will drop off. How does that sound? And now you've got to sort of look at what lead you're on. I'm on lead 2. That's the strongest of the three uh, signals. There's lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. We'll talk about those in lecture. I like to do this check on lead 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my millivolts here and what I'm doing here is I'm looking at my heart rate count. At some point in time my machine will not be able to count the heart rate. Right? So sensitivity asks a question. What is the minimum voltage that this machine will actually count the heart rate accurately on? Now 5960 that's a little swing that's not so bad. I'm going to go down here to uh, 35. Let's go down to 30. You see how it's flashing 30. We're going to hit 30. And notice my wave keeps getting smaller, but my heart rate is pretty solid, actually. I do give it about five seconds to adapt. Remember, there is a slight delay in things. I'm going to go ahead and go down to 20. Let's see what happens. Uh, most monitors have that 60 beat per minute drop off right about now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to 115 and we'll see how this thing does. Ah, notice a failure. There we go. So in other words, the minimum voltage the minimum voltage I may give this machine from a patient in order for it to accurately calculate heart rate is 20 millivolts. And it says so right up here. I got it highlighted. 20 millivolt. So that's how you do a uh, sensitivity. Paper speed. 
you print a, a strip. Okay? And now if you, while I've got the strip on the screen right here, I'd like you all to take a look at it. Uh, you notice how much space there is in between each QRS? There's something funky about each QRS. Do you notice that there are exactly five big boxes in between each QRS? Each one of those boxes is five millimeters. So there's 25 millimeters going through a, in between each beat. My beat is 60 beats a minute. How many beats a second is 60 beats a minute? That's one, right? So one beat uh, per second means that I've got a good measurement of my print speed here just simply by looking at how many boxes there are in between each QRS. This only really works for 60 and multiples of 60. As you go on in school here, and especially as you start getting into pumps, you're going to find that math by 60 is really nice for you. The reason being is because that's how clocks are set up. Math by 60. And I'd love to go through and explain to you why it's that, but that's a matter of, uh, of lecture, not uh, for this explanation. So that's how you verify uh, paper speed. Here's how you get a recording. You go ahead and hit the record button and then you see how these things were flashing? I went ahead and I tapped ECG. Now uh, across the bottom here you should have seen, um, though it might not have uh, been really fast there, it, it said printer sent to recorder. Here I'll hit record again and then I'll press ECG. Come on you. Okay, recording sent to local printer. That's what you want to do. You want to uh, type it to where it says that, and then it'll print out a strip for you. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, there's no real good way to stop that. Come on, you. It won't print forever. It'll stop. When it stops, go ahead and take that strip, and that's a good strip for you. Okay? This strip gets stapled to your work order because this proves you checked the printer right okay and one more alarm delay do you remember we actually already did the alarm delay when we were moving around what was the alarm <laughs> the alarm delay at was it a significant amount of time it was definitely less than 10 seconds. It was definitely less than 2 seconds. It would seem very fast. So we can definitely observe that we observed, uh, saw that in less than 10 seconds. But if you would like, we know that the, from the screen here that the alarm is at 130. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to up my voltage first off so that we get a decent uh, size ECG. And then the second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit my back button here, and then I'm going to go up 120, 140. That'll violate our alarm. So the second that this goes above 120, notice there it, it reacted nearly instantaneously. So we really do have a, a very fast response on, on the uh, alarm delay. Too small to count. <laughs> right? Otherwise, what I was going to do is I was going to count approximately every other QRS. It works really well at, at 120. Count other, every other QRS, and that's one second. See what I mean by math by 60? I'm going to find that's a biomed's friend. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll post this video.